Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. All right. So while Jackie gets the slides up, I'll just do a quick welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today on the transition team lead information. Um, I just wanted to do a quick um, let you know that I'm going to be sending out the our virtual platform that's going to have all of your information and resources in it. I'll be sending that to you all by the end of this week. So look for that. And I'll probably, as soon as I know this um, video is up uh, and on the ITC, I'll send that out to all of the team leads as well. So um, if you know other team leads that weren't able to make it, let them know. I will let them know when this webinar is available for them to view. Um, and I think that's it. I think most of your other questions will be answered by Jackie in her presentation. But again, feel free to answer or to ask questions in that Q&A. And I will keep an eye on that and try to answer what I can. And what I can't, we'll, we'll uh, ask Jackie. So um, I'll just introduce Jackie Hyatt. She's our um, awesome person that we work with um, through the NTAC collab, the collaborative. Um, and she's going to share you with you all about team lead information. So Jackie, go for it. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Randy. And um, I just want to um, reintroduce myself, Jackie Hyatt. Um, and we're now you've probably familiar or maybe familiar with um, INTACT, the National Technical Assistance Center on Transition. We um, received a new grant this last fall. So now we are in tech, the collaborative, and we call ourselves a collaborative because not only um, are we funded by the Office of Special Education Programs, but also um, by Rehab Services Administration. So our VR partners are now a part of our center. So we have um, several different entities that support vocational rehabilitation um, programs and um, special education all under one umbrella. So that's really good. We collaborated a lot before, but now we really, we are one entity. So I just wanted to update you on that information. You will see that um, we just are getting our, all of our documents in a row now. So um, our PowerPoint slides are just, we just received them. So I didn't have time to put them in. So you'll see the old intact slides, but um, it will eventually get everything. I wanted to show you what it looked like. So that's our new logo intact, the collaborative. When you go on our website, um, you'll see that we have a cover, kind of a new cover page. You'll see it looks like this a bit. And then you can still access all the information that was there prior um, with Intact and then also through Wintact, our VR partners. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start going through some information for you today. And please do put questions um, in the Q&A box. That would be awesome. Or um, chat. Randy's going to be watching that for me a bit and we'll answer your questions as we can as we go along um, or at the end if that's what um, we need to do too. So, and let you know that um, I'm available as you start to get into the tool as well. You may, um, sometimes when you're in there doing, using the planning tool, that's when you come across some things you're not sure about. So um, don't hesitate to reach out. And I've got my email address on the last slide too. So um, today, what we wanted to do is just um, talk, uh, I've got a couple things, just about the Institute concept, um, some planning tool information, um, talking about some data you're going to want to be looking at as you're, you're planning, and then um, answer questions, like I said. So just, um, this is a little different, kind of the same, it's the same concept if you've been to the um, the Transition Institute in the past when we've been able to be um, together in one location face to face and hopefully that's going to happen in the near future. Um, but this we wanted to start out and give you the opportunity to do some virtual planning um, as well. So the Institute is still that um, we like to think of it as a hybrid model. It's an Institute and a conference, even in this virtual world um, together. So that means you're um, You've got information coming. It combines the elements of a conference and the elements of an institute. So you're going to um, have time to learn and then also time to um, take a look at 
what's going on locally and, and your community right now, as well as um, do some planning. So looking at um, that the components, um, we've got some content sessions that um, this year for um, this next institute, they're pre-recorded, which is really, I think it's a really nice model and you'll be able to go back and look at those um, in the future too, or to relook at some that you have. There's some really great sessions that um, your Idaho team have put together for you that I think will be really informative. Um, so there's content resources that will go along with that. And Randy mentioned the Padlet. So that'll be the place where you are able to access all of the content sessions and the resources. Then there's also time for you to have team planning sessions. So getting together with your team to review your plans and to update them or to develop a new plan if you haven't had one in the past. And then um, we'll be using the team planning tool, which is a really nice way to um, walk through your ass assessment of what's going on in your community, as well as put together some goals and activities that you can reflect on and, and actually implement over the next um, year. So um, the, it's really, the Institute is really put together to help to build your capacity both your um, increasing your knowledge about um, secondary transition and uh, reflect on your current practices to really prompt you to take a look at what you're doing and how you can use the information and resources you're learning about. And then also to develop a plan that addresses those needs. So that's really the structure. It's really to help you build your local capacity to um, continue the good practices you're already doing as well as improve or increase um, some of those activities that you find you um, or some areas you need to address. So um, just wanted to remind folks that um, the planning tool that you're using and as well as sessions that you'll be seeing are really based on um, the research and support the research and effective practices that have been identified. The tool itself is um, grounded in the taxonomy for transition programming, and it includes five areas that have been identified that are important to um, a local system, um, education, VR, and other agencies, as well as community members coming together to address them. So the five um, key components of the taxonomy include family engagement, program structure, interagency collaboration, student development, and student-focused planning. So the tool itself, and as you plan your local, um, put together your local plans, put together your, um, identify your goals, these will be the areas that you're looking at and evaluating. Why there's five um, it doesn't mean you have to address each one of those. We typically um, tell teams that it's really good to focus in on one, maybe two. Um, and the reason being is it can get pretty overwhelming if you're really looking at all of those systems. You're welcome to go through and do some initial scan of those to see if which one of those um, would fit the best. I know that um, when we had our last face-to-face -face institute, a lot of people really focused on that interagency collaboration component and developed some goals around that. But it's really meant to, um, to help support you in identifying those goals and areas of need in, in your local community. So the institute um, or the capacity building model that we're using really is about um, creating um, that yearly plan with data collection, um, executing that yearly plan and collecting additional data um, or continuing to collect the data as you do, um, using that data to evaluate your outcomes, identifying what worked and what didn't, and then um, gathering that team 
to assess and really look at um, what your current practices are, how you know you're um, working together. And while that says gathering the team sort of towards the end of the year, I'm hoping that you're gathering your team um, on a regular basis throughout the year. It's really good. Um, we found teams that um, take a look at their plan at least on a quarterly basis and update their um, where they are in the process really um, leads to effectively implementing your plan. I know there's teams that meet on a, a monthly basis as well too. So that's really something that as a team looking at um, what makes the most sense for you locally. And then this is just another one, just really um, just talking about that plan, um, looking at your data, um, looking at those evidence-based practices to support those needs and so forth. So one of the most important parts of this whole process is having a local team. So looking at your community to identify those partners and pulling together a team, I've got a list of folks for you to consider as you're um, putting together um, that team. And it includes folks from special education, as well as agency members, um, Idaho, um, Division of Vocational Rehabilitation, as well as um, the Commission for the Blind Counselors. So really wanting to um, include those folks um, in that planning process so that you um, are connecting with um, critical people. Um, looking at directors, principals, assistants, principals, it's really nice to have some of those building administrators, if you can, be a part of um, the team. They bring really valuable information and then can really support the implementation. Um, one of our um, partners that we have found to be really valuable and teams are beginning to really include our career technical education um, teachers and partners. Um, so pulling those folks in, at least one person to represent um, that area is really helpful. School counselors are another really great team member, as well as your um, transition, any transition coordinators you might have in the district or people designated as that. Family members are really an important voice. If you can have a, a family member of one of your students, um, that's really great. Or if not, one of your current students, maybe um, consider a family member of um, one of your former graduates or one of your former students, somebody that's been through your program it's an important voice um, in that team. And then you may have other folks. Some people have been um, fortunate to be able to include an employer. Maybe you have an employer in your community that um, is really interested. I know I've participated with some teams and now that we're virtual, sometimes they can um, participate in some team meetings. It, it doesn't mean that they need to be at every one of your meetings, but um, if there's if you can figure out a way to bring their voice in, that's really helpful as well too. So those are just some ideas about who to consider when you're putting together a team. Um, and then um, as you're preparing your team, um, you want to um, make sure you've got those key personnel on. So one of the things that um, I like to do when I first bring my team together is to ask folks that are sitting around the table, are we missing somebody? Because sometimes we just really don't know who all those people are in our community that we might want to include. Um, and then pull your, ask your team, um, you're gonna want to um, have team, your team members aware of the the sessions that are available um, through the Padlet, the pre-recording, um, and really acclimate your um, team members about what that planning process will include. So watching or participating in some of those sessions, and then also um, participating in your team planning times. And then identifying your team members' roles. So that's really, what that means is really just identifying both functions. So like who might be the note taker, who may facilitate meetings. Um, you may have some other um, roles that you want to include, but then also what do they bring to the table? So um, your 
your vocational rehabilitation counselors may bring um, really good information about um, employers and employment opportunities, work experiences, those types of things for students. Um, while your, um, your special education teachers really bring what's going on into the school um, to that team planning um, time. So really understanding why that person's on the team and then um, being able to communicate that when you guys are together as a team, have that discussion. So one of the things, um, and this may seem really obvious, but just um, some of the benefits of creating a plan um, and why it's important to have that plan so you can revisit it. Um, it really does help um, your community and your team identify what your priorities are. So sitting down and having those conversations and establishing those goals. It really helps to outline um, what you've agreed upon as a team. So as you're having those conversations, learning from each other and identifying what, together what those critical pieces are for you to work on. And then um, understanding and identifying any changes that need to be made. Maybe you've had some, um, some personnel changes or some changes in graduation requirements or other um, things that the team needs to know. So you need to, and then incorporating that into that planning process. Outlining your data. So when you come together, and I'll, I'll share with you on the next slide a few areas to consider for data, but really being about data-driven um, decision-making, bringing that into that process and um, having identifying a way then that you're going to evaluate your activities um, as you move forward too. So you've got that information, you know if something's working when you get back together as a team to discuss. And then um, just really having that time to collaborate and identify um, effectiveness of that collaboration is really important too. Um, just that ongoing. So having that plan in place, one of the things I've really learned in working with teams is as we meet, pulling up that plan, looking at it on a regular basis at each one of the meetings to talk about where we are in the process. Do we need to change some things? It's okay to change in the middle if you're finding something isn't working. So that's why um, creating that plan is really important. It helps keep you on track. So um, let's take a look at some of the data pieces you wanna consider. And um, really this, is, this list is to help you think about data that each one of your team members can bring to the table. So having um, your indicator one, two, 13, and 14 data, so that's graduation dropout, um, your transition um, plan um, contents, and your um, post-school outcome information together from the school side, from special education will be really helpful. Um, VR performance and outcome data, uh, one that's not on here is specific to pre-employment transition services. So having that data about how students are participating um, in pre-employment transition services will be really helpful as well. But um, any kind of um, data such that you might have um, regarding um, academic performance of students as a whole, um, some different things you want to target, especially if you already have some goals established, bringing in the data that's going to help inform you about are you making some change. So these are just um, one of the things, especially um, that you can collect that you might not think of it is um, your participant reactions to your professional development. Have If you're doing some local professional development, um, what is it? What are um, the reactions to that and collecting information, uh, evaluation information, just like we do at the state on um, that participation and what they're thinking, as well as um, having surveys of, from um, teachers or administrators or different folks, students maybe. So bringing in all of those data um, that you might have available is really important and then sharing it with your team members. So what's your team planning time going to look like? This year it's a little different because we're doing it virtual, but um, we've done quite a bit of um, virtual team planning um, in different states as well as on the national level and have found it actually be pretty successful. 
And um, it, one of the benefits is people are more easily able to participate. Um, but you may be at this point, you may be thinking about doing some face-to-face -face, um, planning time as well too. So you're going to be um, scheduling that, um, having during that time, you're going to be having discussions um, just in general. That's where you're reviewing your data. Um, I put on here too, learning um, from the pre-recorded sessions. Something to consider is, are you gonna watch those sessions as a team? Maybe that's something you wanna consider doing, having what we're calling now a watch party, <laughs> where you're all watching it together, sort of like going to the movies in a way. And then, uh, and you can do that virtually as well as face-to-face. Um, um, or are you going to have some time to individually watch those sessions? And you may decide on a combination of those. So um, consider that too. And then just time to work together on your team plan and review that. So that's really what we're looking at when we're talking about your team planning time during this institute. So what is that team planning process going to look like? I So that you're... Um, you're able to um, facilitate those, have that time be meaningful, you're gonna to wanna to identify a facilitator. That can be a team member, maybe um, one of your team members or yourself um, wanna facilitate that time. And um, Randy has offered um, that you could have an outside facilitator, somebody that would help facilitate your team. Sometimes that works well for your team that way everybody gets to participate and you're not having to, you know, um, be the one that's always um, keeping people on track and asking the questions. So um, outside facilitator may be um, a, a bonus or something that's really effective with your team. And when we're face to face, um, that's always been an option too, is to have that team facilitator. So think about how when you've been together, um, in past institutes, how has that worked for you? Um, and then the um, transition planning tools in the same location at transitionprogramtool.org. Um, and um, you'll and have, if you can identify a note taker, um, somebody that can actually input the information into the planning tool and can share their screen too as they're doing that. That's really awesome so that everybody, it helps to focus people and to um, make sure that you're getting everything recorded. And then um, I just listed the different things that the note taker um, can input into um, that discussion, um, the planning tool. So um, it's just, that's a really, we found that to be a really helpful um, thing is to identify a person for that. So I'm gonna, um, we're gonna go into the planning tool and hopefully this works, um, it should. Um, uh, everything seems to be working today as far as internet connections. So, um, but the planning tool, if you haven't been in there, it's really about, um, it provides you some focused questions as well so that you can look at your current activities um, do a full needs assessment, have those discussions. Um, there's, I'll walk you through and show you how that works as well. Um, and then it, it really does put together a plan for you. Sometimes it's not evident as you're going through the questions where you're, what's going to happen and what's it going to look like. I'm going to show you a couple of PDF printouts that you'll get. Um, but it's really, it really does help you um, to walk through the whole process and come out with a plan in the end. So what you, one thing I think that's really important to know, and the tool has been updated since you saw it last, so it has some new features that I think you're going to find are really helpful, and they're upfront, they're not hidden as much as they were before. But um, you are able to print out PDFs or to look at PDFs as a group um, that pulls together all that information. So you've got your team um, list and their roles. Um, you'll have um, your your goals and all of your tasks. So it comes out looking like an action plan. And then you'll also have all the information about what you decided as far as your outputs and your products. So as you're doing this plan, what is it we said we are gonna create 
from this as well too. So all of that is really in a, um, a planning document that you can actually print out and share or either just look at online. So what I'm gonna do next is let's go to the planning tool. Don't forget to ask questions um, as you may have them. So um, Carrie, if you wanna just put that in the chat to transitionprogramtool.org um, is where folks will go to. So you're, you can go right now if you want to, or you just watch where I'm going with it as well, depending on what your setup is. And your username um, is your team leader email. Um, so if you're designated as the team leader, that's the email. And now we do have the opportunity to add a second person that can, um, so your note taker or somebody that can go into the tool and edit. So you'll have two people on your team that have that ability. Um, that helps alleviate some of the issues we've come um, upon when um, folks aren't able to get in. And then um, your team leader password, and that's a pretty easy thing to reset. The key is to make sure your team leader email, um, name and email are the ones that are listed for your team. And if you're a new team leader or um, haven't been um, in for a while, um, or if your email has changed for some reason, I know that happens even if your position hasn't changed, um, you can email Randy um, that change, like who your team leader is and email address, and then we can um, get that sent to our program administrators, our tool administrators, and they'll change that so you can get in. So if you, and like I said, if you you get in, you think you've got everything set up and you get in and you have trouble, we can um, help to problem solve that with you as well. So let me go, let me stop sharing that. And I'm going to see if I can get into Randy, do we have any questions or anything that we need to? Um, there aren't any questions yet. Okay. Go here and see if I can get where I want to go. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do, I'm going to actually log out of this because I want to show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like when you'll go to the transitionprogramtool.org. Hey, you'll Jackie, we just see, we don't see. Oh, what that's saying. right. I have to share again, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I can see it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, so uh, you'll see this as your first slide when you get there. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the K-12 education one. That's the one that's going to have the tool. And if you've been in there before, it should have saved your, um, your email address and password. So it may be really simple for you to get in um, that way as well. So when you go in, you will, um, it says Florida Center for Students with Unique Abilities, and that's a change because of our contracting with them. Still the same group that was, has been supporting us the last couple of years, so not to worry about that. Um, so what you'll do, because I have access to um, different states and local assessments, um, that's why I have the three across here. But you should have um, your local, um, you should be able to log right into yours. I am going to actually use a state assessment because I don't want to mess up anybody's local um, tools. And I am pretty comfortable going into um, this state when it looks the same um, as the local. So it should look the same when you get in there. Um, and I just want to show you some of the what you're going to want to focus on. There's a couple of things. Um, you'll see across the board up here, there's different um, tabs. These are actually tabs that you'll be able to access. So overview, um, assessment and planning, reporting, and tools, which doesn't have anything in there right now. But, um, so starting out on your dashboard, you'll notice that um, on this, when you're on this page, 
you have um, the template looks the same. You have several things you can go to. The first place that that um, you should probably check out is this is your team list. So if you go here and you click on the green button, if you have one, if not, you'll have to create your, your team. But it'll open up like this. And you will have the ability to go in and if you have new people, um, you can add them. Um, if you, uh, you can use this new team, group, team member add. Um, and if you have people that um, are no longer a part of your team, you can um, delete them. So the red, the little red minus sign uh, next to their name will have you do that. Check out the rules um, to make sure they're correct because that's how people will access that allows different levels of access to the tool as well. So um, when you go in there, the one thing that you can't change that we have to change on our side, that's why I said email Randy if your team leader has changed and, and um, is the team leader. And um, that's where we have to go in and actually put in your information and uh, so that's the one piece that you can't, you won't have the ability to change. So um, I'm gonna go back to the dashboard because I wanted to show you a couple of other things here too. Um, so you've got all of these little PDFs that you can download that has information um, related to each one of those steps. So step one is making sure you got your team together and then um, if you haven't already, if your team hasn't done the assessment process, you'll see that um, this is actually the Wyoming State team. They've um, done the assessment on student focus planning and interagency collaboration. So where your green checks are, that shows that you've done those assess areas of assessment. And I'll show you what those look like in just a second. And then um, you've got your, um, you can, print out a PDF of that piece. Once you make your plan, um, you will have available to you, you can actually um, do um, print a, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this so that I can show you what it looks like. So you can um, print off your plan and it will have all of your, um, your tasks and your goals, it'll put your goal at the top with your tasks, your projected completion dates would be in there as well. And then um, any outputs or products that you said you're going to um, develop as well as your expected outcomes. So you can see that it comes out in a way that you're usually used to seeing a plan. And it has everything out um, you can go through and um, it's another way that you can evaluate it. Um, I don't know, I just like to see it sometimes in that format because as I'm going through things, sometimes I have the assessment piece, sometimes I'm not sure. But I just wanted to let you know that that is the product that you end up with, is a plan that you can actually print out. Okay, let me go back to where we were at the dashboard. So each one, you also have the ability as you start to identify things, you can upload documents. So if you have um, some data, some documents with data that you want to share with the team, it's a place you can keep that and hold that. You can see that um, Wyoming put um, some a data report up there they wanted the team to be able to share. Um, and then you can also add links. If, there's, if you don't want to put a document up, but you have a link to a place that you store data that other people can access, or a link to um, maybe a website or some other information that's important, you can add that too. So that's a place that's kind of like your hub, that's your dashboard where you can share information as well as to find out what things you've created and, and where you wanna go. Um, is there anything I need to address at this point on this, Randy, that people have put in? No, all the questions so far have been things I can answer. Just a reminder that if you aren't able to get in right now, that's okay. We'll be able to get you in really quickly, I think, once we get your information to the the planning the planning tool group, right? Right. So send me your information as a reminder, and I'll we'll we'll make sure and get that all updated. 
this yeah. week, I'm guessing. Yeah. And if something happens that you can't get in and you've been in before, if you're struggling with that, um, we can we can walk you through that too. Yes. So I'm going to just quickly go to next is um, the assessment and planning piece, because that's where you're going to spend some time with your team. So when you go into that assessment and planning tab, um, what, what you're going to see is you've got, um, you enter the date of your assessment. So basically, um, you're going to want to enter when you, um, when you go in this next time. But, um, and it's got your team there. So then the next one that you're going to look at is you're going to go to your assess status. And that's where you have access. Remember I mentioned the five um, key areas of the taxonomy? They're right across here. So you've got student-focused planning, student development, interagency collaboration, family engagement, and program structures. And you can make a decision about, you can go through ahead of time, the team can do this, and each one of them has um, benchmarks. Those benchmarks are things that, they're items, they're benchmarks that are based on research that um, have been proven um, through different um, research um, activities to, um, to be beneficial to achieving, um, to putting in place um, a student-focused planning process. I'm gonna um, go through each one of those, I, as I mentioned, has those benchmarks. And just because um, you select an area you want to work on doesn't mean you have to assess every one of those benchmarks. And I'm saying that because one of the groups that I've worked with, they wanted to really work on um, um, self-determination. And there's um, one benchmark that really focuses on that. And so they decided they're going to, they wanted to do interagency collaboration and they wanted to focus on um, self-determination. So they've, they've kind of, they've done a little bit of both of those things. So know that um, your team can make some decisions around what that focus area will be for your um, community. So looking at, I'm gonna show you the interagency um, collaboration because this is an area, one of the um, areas that they assessed, this team assessed. So as they went through each benchmark, you, um, you talk about, you describe what's going on currently. Um, you talk about what that, that current status is and then um, your current needs. And you'll see these little arrows here um, in each one of the boxes. And what, you can, what that means is you can pull that out or like explode as you're typing in that. It makes it easier for folks to see. And you can focus on each one of those individually as you're, um, you're working in it. And as you're having that conversation, um, some reflective questions are put in each one of the benchmarks. So if you click on that um, link, it'll um, explode a um, reflective questions that um, are really just focused on that one benchmark. So it's just a way, you don't have to go through all of these, but it's, sometimes as you're having a conversation, folks may have um, trouble figuring out exactly what it is you want to talk about for that benchmark, or how would you know if you're meeting it or not? So these questions help you to walk through that and um, have that discussion. It's just another way to do that. Then you're gonna want to, um, then you've got a five-star rating for each one. So you, one to five, how well, what's your extent of implementing that benchmark? And you can see here on that 3.1, this team rated themselves as a two. You can also, if you don't know, if you still need to gather information, you can rate it yourself as a question mark and um, know that you need to come back to that. Maybe you need to go gather some data. Um, and then the indicators, um, this, what are some of the indicators of that? Most of it's data. It's all data elements that you're going to want to um, look at as you're answering um, that benchmark two and how well you're implementing it and identifying um, that. So do you have good evidence that 
you either are not doing a great job with that or you are doing a good job. So what is it you're looking at to know where you are in implementing that benchmark? And then after you, you can wait to come back to the priority um, after you go through this and give your star ratings, you can um, then come back and prioritize each. Is it a high priority, a three star, or is it one that isn't as big a priority and that um, you want to wait on? So you go through and you do that. So for each one of the benchmarks, each one of the areas, you go through and um, do that. And I will um, let you know that you're going to want to save. Um, after each one or in between. Don't leave without saving. So we've got lots of save all um, buttons that you can use. And then when you're done, you can save and continue. One of the other things you'll do is you'll notice here, if you want to develop a plan around that benchmark, you put a check, you check it. Um, if you didn't, it would be an unchecked box. So if you want to do that, you just check that box. And then what happens is when you save and continue, it pulls those over for you to focus on. Um, so let's see, let's go back here. So what it does is it pulled over all three of those because they decided they wanted to um, focus on that. Um, let's see. So now we're going to go to make a plan. So they've um, gone in and um, decided, um, created the goals that they wanted to do in each one of the benchmark areas. So let's, let's see. So you can see, let's see, let's go to this one. Um, I didn't actually, this one is one they created a goal on. I'm gonna show you one that's filled in. So what they did was they went in and they were looking at um, the tax, this taxonomy area and they put in um, goals for that. And you can view example goals if you're not quite sure what goal you, to develop for that. There's some examples in there um, that you can do too. And then um, some strategies some example strategies for you to um, take a look at as well too. Um, and then as you go through, um, you add those. Um, let's see. And then if you wanna um, add any additional things, you can just continue to click on those too. So um, once you get into um, this, you can edit the plan, you can go back in and edit anything as well too. So you've got your tasks that you can, you've added in there for each one of those. You've got the person responsible and then you've got your projected completion date. You can see here there's red X's. If you go in and you're reviewing and you wanna take something out or maybe actually you're still creating it and you're like, well, we didn't need to put that in. So um, you can take those out as well too. Um, you've got your outputs that you put in there and then any expected outcomes um, you have for each one of those as well too. Any stakeholders, maybe you found a stakeholder or somebody that needs to be a part of that that you were unaware of and you can add those in there. Um, additional resources you may need and technical assistance needs. So if you put in technical assistance needs, that's one of the places that Randy and um, state folks can look to see what you're requesting. So they can um, come back to you and ask some specifics about that or else um, start to develop some trainings or some resources for you around that as well too. So um, let's see, so then some of you may have plans in place already. So let's go look at the, quickly at the reporting piece. So if you're going to, if you've got a plan in place and you want to report on progress, which you may, you may be doing at your first meeting, if you haven't already, um, before um, you get together um, for the Institute, you can go in and there's, it's pretty slick because it's pretty easy. It gives you lots of radio buttons that you can use to identify where you are in the process with your prod, 
um, your goals. So you can, um, was it achieved? Um, was it not achieved, but you want to drop it from the plan? Um, or do you want to continue working on it? Is it something you want to carry forward? And same thing with all of your tasks. Was it completed, partially completed? What are the next steps to that? Do you need to revise it, carry it forward, or drop it? Um, and it walks through each section of your plan and asks you questions about it. So as you're putting your um, reporting on your progress, um, that's how you'll do that. You'll go into that reporting piece and then um, report on that. And then as you go down to the bottom, um, you'll save and you'll go to the next step then. So if you haven't already, you have a plan in place and you haven't already, then you'll go to that. Um, and then if you have been reporting on progress um, on a pretty regular basis, you can go to your end of the year reporting and it looks really similar, pretty much the same. But um, you just go through and you, you do that final report at the end of the year. So it's set up so that you can use it throughout the year and make those continual updates as well as do a final report at the end. So um, let's see, I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and just remind you, go to your team member first. You can access the different sections from that viewpoint here in the boxes if you've worked on them. This little um, bullseye looking thing is one, it just means that they haven't completed it yet or you, you're in process, but you haven't quite completed it. That's what that means. So, um, if, any questions right now on um, the tool itself? I think I walked through all the different aspects you guys might need to see. Don't be afraid to go in and play around with it and check out the different pieces as well. Yeah, there's no questions so far on the tool, okay. but I was going to just say I'm glad you talked about earlier especially for new teams to really uh -huh. focus on maybe one or two of those areas because it can get pretty overwhelming to look at all of those areas. I know as a team lead the first year we tried to, we tried to, I think, I think we chose three areas and even that was too much. Yeah. So really one or two areas, don't overwhelm yourself, mm -hmm. kind of get used to getting your team put together and the dynamics of your team and kind of start slow. I think that's a good way to to look at it. Yeah. Um, the other questions we've had is I, we are recording it um, and I will, it will be on ITC this webinar and I will let, I'll let you know um, when those links are ready. And again, I've gotten a few emails already. So please email me if you aren't able to get into the tool and we'll get that, that going for you. Oh, some questions are coming in. Hold tight. Okay. Um, login information. Yeah, just if you can email me at um, rcole at sde.idaho.org. Um, I typed it in on one of the answers. Um, email me your information. We'll make sure and get your login information. And then well, there's a question on, we choose our own team from people we work with, right? Yes, but as, as Jackie said, you also wanna look at other people outside of your district folk rehab, family members, if possible, business owners that you might be working with. Um, can you think of anything else, Jackie? I know you had a whole list. Um, family members, and um, you'll have the PowerPoint too. So people that, um, that, are, that are good, just um, looking out, and sometimes if you're really a key player is vocational rehabilitation. Um, outside of the school. And then um, any of you, if you have community rehabilitation providers in your area that you're using, it's good to include them on your team, um, as well as parents really trying to find um, how to get that parent voice in is really helpful. Um, and um, your career tech ad school counselors are really great as well, too. If you can gets um, a school counselor involved, especially as you're going through the assessment process. Some of the team members that you have for um, the Institute may not be able to be at every one of your um, meetings throughout the year, but if you can just um, grab them to help provide some information up front, I think that's really helpful. 
All right, uh, no more questions have come in. Um, but yeah, to go back to your answer there, that last part that you talked about, Jackie, I mean, we, uh -huh. uh, when I was a team lead, we, I mean, we added new people every year. We, we kind of started yes. just to get our general philosophy, what we want to look for, kind of, and then we added, we added every year. Um, and it was yeah, and, and I think that's really, um, that's really important too, is to realize that um, you can add people no matter what. And um, I like to always say that when I've been working with some local teams, there were a couple of districts in particular that we'd go back and it's, well, not in particular, it was almost every one. Every time we'd go back, they'd have somebody new. We'd be like, wait, who's this new person? And um, they, it was because they were in the community and working with across agencies, they would discover people that had resources or interest um, that they didn't know about before. And so as you get into this, bringing in new people, it really is more the rule than um, anything. I think that's what we see most often. So, um, but I just wanted to, um, Randy, are you seeing my slides now? No, we're not. No. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, because I need to go back. And there's some things about Zoom. I Even though I use it constantly, I forget. Screen sharing is one of them and then having to go back and restart. Um, so, I just had a couple of things, but just to um, kind of loop back. So during this institute, you're going to be really focused on um, learning new things through the, the presentations. And like I said, I, I've been really impressed with the presentations that you guys have that are going to be available. Um, and that'll be on the Padlet. And then um, just that team time together to talk through and really start to focus in on um, the needs of your community. But after the Institute, I think you're going to find that you really had time to share with each other. Um, you've got some answers. You may still have, you may have uncovered some questions, but that's okay. That's what, um, why you have that team together is to help find out um, what are some ways we can address those, those questions we still have, come up with some new ideas and um, have some stronger networks. Because one of the things that I always saw for my interagency teams that, that I worked on, they, they helped me because um, I couldn't do transitions huge. It, it involves so many different people. And until I had a team pulled together to address it in a, a, total, a you know, collaborative way together, um, it was really, I wasn't able to do all the parts. So um, I really found that my network was, was what was really important for me to be able to provide those services. Um, and then don't be afraid to go back to the planning site often. And I think every time you guys meet together, use the planning tool. You can access that action plan. You can input. Remember I showed you the review. I think documenting that conversation and, and what you guys went through reviewing that and that'll record and you'll have all of that information in one place. So um, I, you know, I have to say that over the years I've become a bigger fan of the planning tool than I was when I first started using it. And it's really evolved and um, some of the things I showed you today I think really help it. But remember um, also there's resources on um, the Intact Collaborative um, website it's the same, you'll go there and you'll see, like I was telling you, there's a front page and then you can go in and access um, resources on the old websites. Um, but it's still transitionta.org until we were in the process of building a really robust um, website, but that's to come. So um, with that, um, you can um, find us everywhere. <laughs> Um, but I just wanted on the last slide, I, I put in my um, contact information, which is different than it used to be. I um, no longer work for Transcend in the new project I'm working for University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Um, so my new address is jhyatt8 at uncc.edu. Um, you can reach me there. And I'm in Boise. So if you need any, um, like as we get to be face to face again if you want some on site um, work. That's a potential too. 
So I'm going to stop sharing. And um, so I don't know. I is if there's nothing else, um, Randy or no more questions have come in. So okay. yep. Thank you okay. so much, Jackie. We appreciate. Oh, your you bet. This is great. I'm so happy to work with you guys. Great. Well, Thank you. For the next few weeks, months. Yay. Perfect. All right. Thank you everyone for joining us. We appreciate your time and we'll get this posted and I'll let you know when it, everything's available. Thank you.